Hi, welcome back. This is Complex Analysis, Holomorphic Functions, third session. And in the last lecture, I gave allegedly a proof, and then I said the proof is not very correct. So I asked you to find out the mistake. I do not know how many of you tried, and this is, in fact, when I tried to solve the problem, that's the way I solved. Then I, when I reviewed, I found what was the problem in the proof, in the solution. Okay. Then I rectified that. In fact, I found two different solutions, maybe more, but anyway, two. And I will try to indicate that because this will be a very good learning lesson. You should learn that, okay, things are subtle. Anyone can make certain mistakes and you should not ever be ashamed of that. What you should do is what whenever you think you got a solution, you produce a result, review it. And when you review, you have to look for whether there are any mistakes, whether it's very precise, correct. And second thing is you can also see whether the proof can be yield much stronger result or whether the same kind of techniques can be used elsewhere. This is how one develop mathematics. It's not just for you know learning something by heart and writing exam, getting grade. Okay, such people usually will not shine later in life when they go for either research career or teaching career. Okay, I don't know what, what is your aim, but if that's a aim, this will be a good lesson. Yeah, okay, let's go. So, this is the thing we had. So, we said f is a function from, I don't remember, 0, 1 to c continuous. I don't know why it's going proper. It's not going properly. Yeah, right, right. Okay, now I understood. Okay. Then we define g of z to be 0 to 1 e power i t z f of t dt. Okay. So, we found that g makes sense. This is a well-defined function. And and we wanted to show G is differentiable. And we also made a guess, this is our guess, okay, namely, it is 0 to 1 i t e power i t z f of t dt. Okay, right. So, please recall what we did, what we looked at was, we looked at something like G of z plus h minus G of z minus h. This we found it to be 0 to 1 of e power i t z, z plus h minus e power i t z. There is a 1 by h outside times f of t dt. Right? Then we try to push in h inside and then I try, we try to do g of z plus h minus g of z by h minus i t times, okay, 0 to 1 i t times e power i t z f of t dt. We try to estimate as h goes to 0. Okay, we had some kind of a proof, okay, and what is the mistake? The mistake was Let's look at what we did was after all those things we had something like this e power i uh, t time okay z plus h times t minus e power i t z by h minus i t times e power i i t z okay times mod of t dt then we wanted to show this. Okay, this is less than epsilon, so that's 0 less than mod h less than delta, etc. Okay, it looks all right, but where the mistake? The mistake lies in the thing. Look at this. What I am looking at is a function. Well, let me call it phi t. Okay, phi t of z equal to e power i t z. So, this is a function depending upon t, and its derivative phi t prime of z is i t e power i t z right now if you give an epsilon there is a delta but the delta will depend upon t it's a function of t 
Are you following? Yeah? If 0 less than mod h less than delta for that particular t, this will work. This minus this will be modulus will be less than epsilon. Please pay attention. These are the things which your teachers usually do not explain because they think it will confuse a student. But if you want to master analysis, you have to learn. Okay, this in modulus, you want to say less than epsilon, but then my, I have to restrict my h so that mod h is less than delta, but that delta will depend upon t because this is a function of t. But this integration is over t, therefore I should have some kind of a uniform delta, okay, which I may or may not be able to do. Or I have to work hard to get. Are you following? Please pay attention. Even if you don't understand 100%, it does not matter. But this is the one which will open your eyes and learn how to look for things. Right? These are the kind of things you would have seen when you wanted to say something like xn converges to x, y n converges to y, xn y n converges to xy. When you do algebraic manipulation, you will have something like some mod y n into mod x n minus x. So if I want this to be less than epsilon by two, you will divide by mod y n minus y should be less than epsilon by mod x n. But okay, but that depends on n. That kind of thing you are done. And similarly, when you wanted to show yeah from an interval a, b to r continuous is integrable, Riemann integrable. Okay, this exists. Okay, mere continuity will not do. You, if you go through the proof, you will understand you wanted a uniform continuity of f. See, these are the real subtle points of analysis. Okay, you just go through the proof line by line, you think it's easy, but only when you analyze, you will see how careful analysts are. That's why it's analysis, your analysis. Yeah, right. Do you follow that? So I will just request you to pause, review, and proceed. Okay, as I said, even if you understand 30 40 percent of what I'm talking about, that's good enough. Okay. So now how do I rectify the proof is a question. Okay. So the way we do is the following. So let us look at only g of z plus h minus g of z okay by h. Okay. This is going to be 0 to 1 e power i t z plus h minus e power i t z by h because h is constant therefore it can come out into f of d dt right and what are the, the whole problem the whole thing depended upon t somehow i want to control okay i want to choose an estimate which is going to be independent of t for this difference quotient okay this is basically idea and my intuition says t is going to lie in between 0 and 1 therefore somehow i should be able to control it using mod t is or t, okay, t is less than 1 or equal to 1. And of course, f is going to be continuous function, it will be bounded, okay, etc. These are the basic ideas, but I have to make a rigorous proof out of them. I am going through this thing so that, you know, you learn to think, okay, rather than simply me memorize and go through the proof, right. First thing we observe is, this is 0 to 1, e power i z, i t z is common. Therefore, it is e power i h minus 1 by h f of t dt. Yeah? You have you understood this? Right. Now, uh, I th sorry <laughs> yeah, I made a mistake this is i th e power i th minus 1 by h yeah now what do I know again into e power i th okay this is a, now you remember this is e think, think of this as a function of h then e power i t 0 will be 1 therefore this is e power i t h minus e power i t 0 by h. 
Therefore, I am looking for the derivative of e power i t h as a function of h. This is as a function of h. Therefore, it is i t. This is all intuition. Okay, not intuition. This is proper. This gives me an idea. Therefore, this follow. Okay, should be approximately. Okay, the e power i t h minus one h should be approximately equal to i t. Therefore, I should learn to estimate this follow. And remember again, t is not going to vanish, but luckily I have taken z out. Okay, I just have to no, I don't have to worry about z now. I should only worry about t now. Okay, but this is easy. Now you see that this is nothing other than e power i i t h minus one minus i t. This is h by h. This object equal to this. Okay, right. Now what is e power i t h? E power i t h is going to be one. Okay, plus i t h plus i t h power n by n factorial, where n is greater than or equal to two. Right. Therefore, this object is nothing other than summation. Yeah, one by h. Let us take it out. One by h modulus into I power n, t power n. Remember, t is uh, into mod h power. This is less than I could do h power n by n factorial. Yeah. Again, notice that I am using a non-trivial result here. That is, if suppose summation a n is absolutely convergent, then That means mod n is conversion, right? Let t s therefore I know a n the infinite series is conversion, right? Thus let the sum be s, let the sum of this be v sigma. Then what do I know? If s n are partial sums of a n, then s n converges to s, and sigma n converges to sigma, and sigma is the elevator of sigma n. Yeah, this is a set, right? Now what is S n modulus S n? That is less than equal to mod a one plus mod a n by triangle inequality, which is less, which is equal to sigma n, which is less than equal to sigma. Therefore, S n converges to S and mod S n is less than equal to sigma. Therefore, and we know S n converges to mod S n converges to mod S. Therefore, I conclude mod S is less than equal to sigma. Do you follow all these things? That's what I'm using. Okay, you see that analysis don't work. Think of like algebra, simply manipulating symbols because they are finite. In algebra, most often it's finite, so you can always manipulate things using commutativity, associativity, etc., etc. Okay, using various algebraic properties. Here you can't do that because we are dealing with infinite series. So when I want to say this modulus is less than or equal to, I'm pushing the modulus inside. Therefore, modulus i power n and modulus of t power n, but t is non-negative, right? But this fellow is less than or equal to one by mod h. Yeah. Right, yeah. Into what? Oh. Summation mod h power n by n factorial. This is n greater than equal to two. Yeah. Are you following? No. There is also mod h. Let me just ignore all those things. Okay, so what do you think I have got? So, I want to take h. Is, this is n greater than equal to two. Therefore, let me take one h out. Okay, h squared out. Therefore, it is going to be mod h squared greater than equal to. Okay, mod h to the power n minus two by n factorial. Yeah. Do you get that? Yes. Okay. And what what is that I can do? So I have e power i t h. Let me just do that. So I have e power i t h minus one minus i t h by h. That is going to be n greater than equal to two. 
i t h power n by n factorial n into 1 by h right now suppose i take h squared out okay therefore it's going to be 1 h will be out because h squared out and then n greater than or equal to 2 i power n t power n h to the power n minus 2 by n factorial yes okay are you following this i want to estimate this therefore this in modulus this object in modulus is less than or equal to mod h into modulus of these things i already explained why i can take modulus now remember t is less than or equal to 1 therefore t power n is also less than or equal to 1 therefore this will be mod h to the power n minus 2 by n factorial yeah okay so I, now remember n factorial is greater than or equal to therefore this is less than or equal to 1 by n minus 2 factorial and n is greater than or equal to 2 right therefore this object is less than or equal to mod h to the power n, n minus 2 by n minus 2 factorial and n greater than or equal to 2 this is same as saying mod h to the power n by n factorial n running from 0 to infinity which is e power mod h therefore i have shown this fellow is less than or equal to mod h into e power mod h see now independent of t right therefore what do you think i have proved i have shown that e power i t h minus e power i t by h minus i t is less than mod h into e power mod h yeah so where does that leave us so that shows therefore g of z plus h minus g of z by h minus okay 0 to 1 i t e power i t z f of t d t in modulus is less than or equal to 0 to 1 mod h into e power mod h into modulus f of t d t this mod h comes out there right and okay and this in turn again e power mod h also this i can write it as as i am equal to mod h into e because h will be now going to zero right and therefore mod h will be going to zero therefore mod h will be less than one less than equal to one therefore e power and exponential is increasing therefore e power h is less than equal to e therefore this i can actually show it is less than equal to e and zero right now this this is finite and this e is constant and mod h which goes to zero as h goes to zero okay so we have proved the result okay this proof is rigorous now okay so go through the proof hopefully this proof is <laughs> rigorous and you see how many small small things we have to use right like exponential is increasing function and if i have summation a n which is absolutely convergent how does the modulus of the sum deals with the summation of the modulus of a n all small small details everything we have to use okay learn this thing these are the things which you know people simply keep on doing and they look all right plausible so we tend to accept for example when i was a student i also did the same thing 
Okay. I thought it's okay, okay. But when you begin to ask questions, whether I have justified why it's true, what is the justification, then you try to understand these things better. I know usually in the commerce analysis course, these kind of tough things are never taught. But the reason I want to teach all these things is very simple. Okay. Nowadays analysis has become very become very weak. Usually people go for algebra, topology, or the so called soft analysis where very difficult analysis is not dealt with. Okay. And so this kind of hard analysis only people with working in PD or harmonic analysis some time, even there they may not. They do such things. So the I want our country to become good and very strong in analysis too. That's the reason. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Please go through it, review the proof, and there are a lot of subtle things which I explain again and again. Go through, understand, and okay, absorb it. Okay. You will thank me if not today, sometime later. If you go stick to mathematics, you continue to do research in mathematics. Okay? Yeah, all the best. Let's go back. Now, after all these things, let me see whether I share the screen. Yeah. So, after all these things, I want to give a second proof. Okay? Let us look at what is G of Z. G of Z, by definition, is integral 0 to 1 e power i t z f of t dt. Right? Now, what do I know? e power i t z is a, a power series function. Therefore, I can substitute this 0 to 1. Okay? Summation n equal to 0 to infinity. Okay? i power n, t power n, z power n by n factorial into f of t dt right this f of t if you want bring it inside okay this you follow that now let us look at this this series okay you can think of it as z c n z power n okay what is c n c n is going to be i power n t power n f of t by n factorial right now i claim this series is absolutely uniform, absolutely convergent and uniformly convergent on any finite part of the complex plane. Why? You have an estimate, right? What is the estimate? Look at this mod i power n and mod t power n, okay, mod z power n by n factorial, and this is m. So m is such that mod of t is less than or equal to m for all t, right? And this is 1. This is less than or equal to 1, therefore this is less than or equal to this is less than or equal to 1, this is 1. And m is also come, therefore mod z power n by n factorial. Okay, this is a, a, m times a exponential of mod z. Therefore, this is absolutely convergent for every z in the complex plane. Therefore, the radius of convergence of this series is infinity. And hence it's uniformly convergent on any finite part of the plane. Are you following? Yes? Right. Therefore, give, right? So, given Z, okay, choose R very large so that, okay, even 2 times mod Z is less than R. Very large. Right? So, I am going to work everything in 0 capital R kind of thing for a given fixed Z right now let's look at this is for any z okay therefore g of z this is uniformly convergent therefore on any point part of the plane i can interchange remember again recall we have shown if f1 converges to f uniformly on a b and continuous of course integral a to b f1 converges to integral f to a b right therefore what do i have here so i have here Okay, 0 to 1. This is uniformly convergent, therefore the summation comes out. 
okay let me write it again i power n t power n and n factorial f of t into z power n n equal to 0 to infinity the whole thing into dt right are you following therefore what are the things which will come out n equal to 0 to infinity which are this integral and whichever does not involve n will come out i power n n factorial and z power n will come out therefore i am left with 0 to 1 f of t t power n dt have you understood this yeah and remember okay for for a fixed m this this again you can think of this another constant let to dn equal to i power n by n factorial into 0 to 1 f of t t power n see what is mod tn this is less than equal to mod i power n which is 1 by n factorial into this will be less than equal to m that's it right mod f t is less than equal to m and mod t power n is less than equal to 1 therefore the integrand in modulus is less than equal to m and integrate from 0 to 1 it is m therefore this whole thing is less than equal to m by n factorial yeah so this fellow in modulus okay all this fellow is less than equal to dominated by m into z power n by n factorial okay have you understood this okay and again for the same reason this series is uniformly convergent on any finite disk therefore i can do termwise differentiation this is a power series therefore i can do termwise differentiation look at this carefully right this series may not be uniformly convergent on the entire complex plane but when i fixed as z i can put it in a very large disk so i can talk about differentiality of g only in that disk that's what you are doing okay therefore what is g prime of z g prime of z is 0 to infinity i power n by n factorial and z power n into z power n minus 1 yeah and 0 to 1 f of t t power n dt remember dn z power n therefore the derivative is dn n z power n minus 1 that's all we have done right therefore this is equal to so i into i power n minus 1 z power n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial into 0 to 1 f of t t power n dt I'm just rewriting. Are you convinced? Just I took the i out. Now remember again for the same reason this series is uniformly convergent in B0R. Right? Therefore I can push the the summation inside the integral therefore that's going to be 0 to 1 i i power n minus 1 z power n minus 1 and n minus 1 factorial then i take 1 t out of this t power n and write it as t power n minus 1 into f of t dt and there is a summation just make sure you are following this is there is an i which i took out and there is a I am pushing this sum inside the integral right if you want I will write it again okay 0 to 1 let me write the same way okay summation i to the power n z to the power n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial 0 to infinity into f of t t power n dt if you want put a t power in here right so i want to rewrite this this is n greater than equal to 1 okay the, i want to rewrite this 0 to 1 take 1 i out 1 t out therefore it's i t okay and one, now is 0 to infinity 
i power n minus 1 z to the power n minus 1 n minus 1 factorial and t to the power n minus 1 and f of t dt but what is this object this object is e power i tz okay therefore this is nothing else than 0 to 1 i t e power i tz f of t dt so this is the second proof so as I said earlier please go through this try to understand what really happened this kind of thing is never ever taught in complex analysis course but if you want to really master analysis and particular complex analysis because may, many of the functions in complex analysis are defined by two tricks if you had a, followed my what is complex analysis about you know any holomorphic function is locally analytic therefore there is a power zero okay in, so intuitively any holomorphic function is defined locally by a power series and second way of generating holomorphic function is by integral okay these are called integral representation g of z equal to e power i t z f of t dt this is called integral representation of the holomorphic function g we are going to give one more example okay these are the things actually heart and meat of complex analysis how to represent how to get lot of holomorphic functions so you learn them well when you want to do Fourier analysis you will see this kind of thing again carries over so learn these things well I want you to become good analyst rather than simply pass passing the course getting a good grade So let us screen share. Now let's go to the next example. So this is a, another example. This is a simplest Cauchy type integral. This is just a jargon. Don't worry about that. Suppose f is a function from 0, 1 to C continuous right now define a function g of z to be 0 to 1 f of t by t minus z dt where t is not equal to z okay where z is not in 0 1 that means okay Okay, this is removed and z could be anywhere any of the z anywhere could be allowed z could be here z could be here z could be here z could be here etc okay therefore it is c minus 0 1 because t minus z must make sense do you understand that 1 upon t minus z should make sense okay now what is that we want to claim we want to prove g is holomorphic on c minus this notice this is an open set because the 0 1 is actually combat it's closed and remove that its complement will be open this is what you want to prove okay and learn this proof well this argument will be repeated again and again in our course okay unfortunately my course is very analysis heavy so unless you have gone through my real analysis course well learn analysis well you may find it difficult if you are finally a BSc student who are struggling to learn real analysis because many universities teach complex analysis also but usually it is usually like a campus course okay almost following the book of Churchill and Brown which is meant for engineers and physics physicist okay that kind of course then it's okay but if you want to do analysis this will be okay this may be a little tough 
who are weak in analysis but you go through discuss with your friends you will become more confident you will enjoy analysis also on the way anyway so what do i want to do the trick is this okay so let us start with any z a let us say a okay not in 0 1 right now i want to look at that there is an r positive so the distance between a and t is greater than or equal to 2r for every t in 0 1 okay there are many easy ways of doing but let's do that because remember 0 1 is a complex compact set right i'll give a direct proof let's look at okay t going to mod a minus t okay this is positive because t is not there right and this is a continuous function correct yeah therefore on the compact the co continuous real valued function therefore on the compact set it attains its minimum call m that m i call denote by 2r therefore for any t in g in 0 1 mod a minus t will be greater than equal to 2r do you follow that pause review proceed yeah okay now let's go through therefore again i there is a picture yeah so this is my z this is my a okay now let's look at r this is r and take any z right okay what i want to plan what i plan to do i am going to tell you first so that you will be able to follow i am going to show go g of z is a power series for z in bar power series in powers of z minus a right that is what i want to say is g of z is of the form cn z minus a to the power n for all z in bar then what does that mean g of z is locally a power series we know any power series is differentiable in fact it is infinitely differentiable therefore it is g is holomorphic on bar but a is arbitrary therefore it is going to be holomorphic as long as a does not lie in the interval 0 1 do you get it this is all i want to do now what is the trick again if you have gone through my infinite series etc i always place important on only two things comparison test and geometric series right so let us look at this so they want, what, what i want to do is the following this is 0 1 and this is by bar this is my z and this is my a right let us look at this so what is g of z g of z is going to be 0 to 1 so let us take z in bar okay f of t by t minus z so what i want to do is i want to do z minus a this i want to write in geometric series in form of some c something like this okay i want to express this and which will be uniformly convergent therefore i can interchange the integral etc just don't worry this you should always have some kind of a blueprint some kind of an idea how to you want to go through the proof okay this is what i want to do now what how will i do that so i want z minus a to the power n therefore the trick is let us look at t minus z as t minus a plus a minus z which is t minus a minus z minus a right therefore if i take t minus a out what do i get 1 by z minus a by t minus a right so now you know 1 minus x right 1 by 1 minus x this has an expansion x power n you provided mod x is less than 1 therefore what do i have to make sure i have to make sure mod z minus a 
by t minus a is less than 1. Is less than, is less than equal to r, less than equal to some epsilon, where epsilon is less than 1. Right? Are you following? This is the trick. Now, how do I do that? Let us again do that. So, I have, so that means, what do I want? That means, mod z minus a should be less than mod t minus a. I want to show. That is very clear. Right? Z. Mod z minus a will be at most r, mod t minus a will be 2r. Do you accept it? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Z belong to where? B R. Therefore, mod Z minus A is less than R. And T minus A is greater than equal to 2 R for every T in 0, 1. Therefore, 1 by T minus A in modulus is less than equal to 1 by 2 R. Therefore, mod Z minus A by mod T minus A is less than half. So, I can do the geometric power series. Yes? Yeah. But you just have to make sure by T minus Z, I just have to make sure something more mod T minus Z. Okay? Yeah. So, let us look at mod T minus Z. Remember, mod T minus Z is below I want to say it is bounded above, right? Mod t minus z, let us see, mod t minus a is less than equal to mod t minus z plus mod z minus a, right? Therefore, mod t minus z is greater than equal to mod t minus a minus mod z minus a, which is greater than equal to 2r minus r, which is greater than equal to r, right? So, any z, okay, the distance between z and any t will be greater than or equal to r. That's all you have proved. Clear? Okay. So, let us go back. So, I have my g of z equal to 0 to 1 f of t by t minus d u t this is equal to 0 to 1 f of t by t minus a in, into 1 by z minus a by t minus a. Yeah, t minus z I already wrote. I don't, I'm not repeating. Is that clear? Okay. Now, this I can write as 0 to 1 f of t this there is a duty etc. I will not I forget to write such things t minus a and summation z minus a to the power n by t minus a to the power n n running from 0 to infinity and the whole thing time duty. Yeah. Now this series is uniformly convergent on B a r right now are you following sure okay now let us look at f of t as usual let the equal to some kind instant t in 0 1 and 1 by t minus a in modulus okay we already know that mod t minus mod t minus z sorry yeah t minus a Okay, t minus a modulus here greater than equal to 2r, therefore 1 by mod t minus a is less than equal to 1 by 2r. Do all of you get that? Okay, what I am arriving at? I am arriving at, okay, this series is, I want to interchange this. So, this one, 0 to 1, okay, let us look at this series, f of t by t minus a and z minus a power n by t minus a power n and to the root infinity. Okay. This series is uniformly convergent. Why? This is bounded by m. Okay. Model of t. 
by modulus t minus a into mod z minus a by t minus a whole power n 0 to infinity okay this is lada equal to m by 2r and mod z minus a this is half power n you follow that this is uniformly convergent so what does that mean that means I can shift the I can interchange the integration and the summation right therefore what do I get I am going to get summation 0 to 1 f of t by t minus a into z minus a power n by t minus a power n and dt yeah therefore this is equal to maybe I will keep it okay this is equal to 0 to 1 f of t by t minus a n to the power n plus 1 dt into z minus a to the power n this is 0 to infinity okay and all this integral you take out I got this therefore your cn is going to be integral 0 to 1 f of t by t minus a to the power n plus 1 dt and this is a convergent power series we already saw that okay right if it's a convergent power series we already know if cn z power n or z minus a to the power n to infinity we know what is cn cn is something to do with f nth derivative of n at a by n factorial or the other way around right c c2 will be c2 2 factorial will be second thing therefore that will be of 2 yeah right so we know what is hence what is f1 at a that is going to be 0 to 1 f of t by t minus a to the power n plus 1 dt I hope there is an n factorial here or the other way around I am slightly let me just make sure to make okay if I have c n z minus a to the power n the derivative is going to be n c n z minus a to the power n minus 1 second one will be n into n minus 1 c n into z minus a to the power n minus 2 and third will be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 by c n into z minus a to the power n minus 2 this is the f dash at a okay of course I have to put z equal to a f double dash at a and f triple dash at a etc yeah so the only thing which will survive will be 3 factorial the only uh, serving term will be 3 factorial therefore that by 3 factorial uh, this is correct yeah so please go through the argument okay this kind of integral is called Cauchy type integral because you see there is a singularity when I define g of z it is f of t by t minus z z comes in the denominator okay so if you omit those z outside that it's going to be holomorphic and we also found what are the derivatives the derivatives are beautifully given by again look at that don't worry about the n factorial etc if there is some problem forget it the nth derivative is not, again has a integral representation namely 0 to 1 f of t by t minus a to the power n plus 1 dt and okay a factor of n factorial maybe multiply or divide I don't care I had already done but I don't okay one can fix it but get the idea okay so we have shown that is holomorphic and unlike the earlier one it was holomorphic entire function it is holomorphic on all of c whereas this one is holomorphic outside the interval 0 to 1 I took 0 to 1 but you could take any interval here to be also the same kind of analysis will work okay I hope you enjoyed and I hope this mix will love analysis and if you are afraid of analysis please go through it you will begin to love okay all the best we will meet again